It's been ages since I've experienced the world of Fallout, but man, it's about damn time that we come back to the Fallout series. And to be honest, I can't think of a better way than to check out Fallout New Vegas. <laughs> man, this was... this... <laughs> Playing this game makes me feel so great and there's absolutely nothing that can bring me down. God, but are you ugly. walk out the door, you see someone that you know, and they ask you how you are, and you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because... So I guess now that I'm done standing in front of a mirror, we can sit back, grab a controller, and enjoy the wonderful world that is Fallout New Vegas. Though, come to think about it, imagine an apocalyptic desert world filled with ghouls, super mutants, and a group that enjoys beating up slaves probably shouldn't be described as a wonderful world. I guess what I'm trying to say is that I'm really excited to review Fallout New Vegas. And yes, this game nearly dethroned Crash Bandicoot 2 Cortex Strikes Back as my favourite video game of all time. So obviously this game means a lot to me. Hell, my most viewed video on YouTube as of right now is how to level up fast in Fallout New Vegas. And still, to this very day, I get comments like, this video works as of this date. Probably a bit too much. Bethesda did own the rights to make Fallout games, but they did allow someone to create a spin-off game about the world of Fallout. So, which developing group would step up to take on that challenge? Well, in comes a new challenger as Obsidian Entertainment took the great responsibility to create Fallout New Vegas. And man, even though New Vegas is a spin-off game, but this game shits all over Fallout 3. And why is that? Well, let's not waste time and get stuck into it. The game opens with the monologue of War Never Changes being narrated by the talented Ron Perlman. The actor who is most known for is playing the leading role of Hellboy. The game takes place in 2281, and the region we're in is being located in the former city of Las Vegas, now known as New Vegas. Uh, roll credits. There has been a rivalry going on between the NCR, a new villainous group called Caesar's Legion, and the mysterious Mr. House along with his Securitrons, who runs the city of New Vegas. There's a place called Hoover Dam which provides power to New Vegas and NCR has been holding it for over four years. Caesar's Legion have tried to take over the dam many times, but ends up failing in the process. A character we'll be playing for this story is a courier. We were supposed to deliver a package to the New Vegas Strip to Mr. House, but it all turns for the worst as the courier gets kidnapped by three guys. But the main guy you need to worry about is Benny, being voiced by Matt Perry. He tells us the package we had was a platinum chip and he takes it away. Then afterwards, he shoots the courier, leaving him to die as the screen fades to black. I don't want to set the world. We wake up at Good Springs where Doc Mitchell helps the courier. Kinda weird I named my character the gaming critic, this must have been some really old footage back then. So here's where we customize our character, and I'll just say right now that the opening here is so much more better than Fallout 3's. No meaningless task you have to do and playing through the intro for 30 to 40 minutes, dragging on for way too long, you choose your character, give him some perks and answer some questions, and you're off on an adventure in around 5 to 10 minutes. I will admit that the character creation is exactly the same as Fallout 3, and maybe tweaking it a little to stand out would have been the better option in my opinion, but it's not that big of a complaint. And the cool thing about this game is New Vegas brought back the traits. For those who are not familiar, traits are these cool perks you can add to your character, and each one has a positive and negative effect, making each playthrough the more interesting. I highly recommend you try out the Wild Wasteland perk as you experience a ton of weird shit throughout the game. I won't spoil what happens, but trust me, it's worth it. And if you have the guts, you can play this game on Hardcore Mode, a much more realistic feel than normal with having your character to eat and drink to survive, and ammo and bottle caps have weight. Yeah, for the sake of the video, I'll probably just play it on regular. 
So our main objective is to trace our tracks to find Benny and the Platinum Chip. The story sounds pretty simple, but it does evolve into something more bigger later in the game. So we leave the house and we can pretty much do whatever we want to. And just by looking at the environment straight away, it feels like you're a part of the post-apocalyptic world. Exploring around the empty deserts and the old ruins of what used to be Las Vegas is so cool and it really is nice that we have a different themed location. Fallout 3 had the city structures filled with buildings and underground tunnels, while New Vegas has a more wasteland feel to it. Nothing bad about that by any means, and I'm glad that there's a different natural environment to explore than looking at the same thing over and over. As for gameplay goes, if you're familiar with Fallout 3's gameplay, then you'll have no troubles here. The gameplay for New Vegas is the same as Fallout 3's, and it's not a bad thing. I really enjoy the gameplay in Fallout 3, and my feelings for New Vegas is exactly the same. I love exploring around place to place in a third person experience and using my VAT system to shoot any different types of enemies I see in front. No matter if it's a laser, plasma, handgun, shotgun, sniper rifle, or even if it's an over the top explosive weapon of mass destruction, it's really fun to blow up enemies. There's nothing really too much to say about the gameplay as it is the same as Fallout 3 and I have talked about it before in my Fallout 3 review. If you like the gameplay in Fallout 3, then you'll like it here in New Vegas. Speaking of enemies, there's also new enemy types and factions you'll come across, like geckos, night stalkers, coyotes, and many more. What I like about it is each enemy is ranked on their difficulty. Depending on what name they're listed will determine how tough they'll be. So you might want to carry some extra stim packs or ammo just in case if you get stuck into trouble. Or you can just fast travel your way out of there, I don't know. As for factions, you have new groups to meet, like the Van Graffs, a group of people that sells different types of laser weapons, Boomers, former Vault members that left to bark on their journey to obtain as much explosives as they can, and the White Glove Society that are secretly a bunch of cannibalisms. Yeah, that's pretty fucked up. Each faction has a reputation. If you're on their good side, then I'll consider you as a friend. But if you're on their bad side, then I'll have no problem shooting you on sight. You can also wear their uniform to disguise yourself as a member of that group, and I love that little feature they added. The quest in this game is absolutely awesome. One of the main reasons why I love the quest in New Vegas is the number of different ways to tackle and finish the quest, and it feels like each action you do does have a consequence to your character. Another nice touch they did is each name of the quest is named based on a song. Now that's some pretty smart thinking right there. Now I don't exactly want to spoil all of the good quests for you as experiencing it for yourself is a much better feeling. But some quests I highly recommend keeping an eye on is nothing but a hound dog, beyond the beef, and my personal favourite one, come fly with me. There's also a cool side quest you can do which is trying to collect all the sunset bottle caps. Good luck finding them though because they are tough to locate. Most of the characters you meet are really enjoyable to talk to. Nearly each character feels like they have a personality. You get to meet an Elvis Presley ripoff called The King, some mob leaders, and even a cowboy talking robot. Have you ever seen one of those before? Caesar is probably the most interesting character in my opinion. Even if his ways is pretty messed up, he has a unique charm you can get behind on. The companions you get to hang out with are pretty cool. Almost each one has a huge backstory you can get to know more about that person, and you can unlock some special quests based around on your companion. And I'll definitely take the characters and the quest in New Vegas rather than... Oh, let's just say... Fallout 4. Which reminds me, there's another settlement that needs assisting. Uh, come here and I'll mark it on your map. Oh fuck off, Preston! Okay, time to get a little bit serious. There is something I've been meaning to discuss for a while now. The difference between Obsidian and Bethesda. You may see this as me talking trash about Bethesda. And you're kind of right, I am. Just don't take this too personally, this is coming from my point of view. There is one difference between the two that easily stands out, and that one difference is the reason why I choose Obsidian over Bethesda. In Fallout New Vegas, no matter what kind of character you see, a minor or major, you can kill anybody and everybody. It shows that in Fallout New Vegas, no one gets the special treatment, and that's a good thing. 
It makes it more realistic and natural in an RPG game to do whatever you want. And the downside is, if you kill a good person, your karma goes down and you could lose some quest lines. Simple, but pretty effective. The best example I can come up with is Sunny Smiles and Preston Carvey. I cannot believe I'm talking about this guy again. They're both similar in terms of meeting them at the start of your journey and showing you the ropes. Say if my character didn't like Sunny Smiles, can I just simply walk up and shoot her? Well, say no more because you can do that. But in Bethesda's case in Fallout 4, say if you want to kill Preston Carvey, well, you can hurt him, but because they programmed most of the good guys to be unkillable, you can't. Haha, <laughs> oh, look at me go. You see, with the power of the Minuteman by my side, I'm invincible. Okay, seriously, you're really pissing me off right now. And how the hell did you get into my house? It feels like they have a force field around them, and for a role-playing game where you can do whatever you want, kinda does suck in a huge way. And it feels like my choices don't matter because Fallout 4's game is designed to follow a path they already created for you instead of creating your own path and deciding what you feel like doing. And that is why I will 100% take this game any day of the week rather than Fallout 3 and 4. Because in New Vegas, you have the options to do what you feel like. There are no pathways for you as you have to create some for yourself and that's a really cool thing to do in an RPG game. The freedom of choice. I think I've made my point across. I would love to hear some of your thoughts on what you feel like what an RPG game should be programmed. You do have the right to agree or disagree with my opinion. Just don't be a dick about it. Nobody likes that. So you go from one place to another to find Benny and the Platinum Chip. After many hours spent and with enough information, you finally make it to the New Vegas Strip and catch up to Benny. And once you have obtained back the Platinum Chip, the story then turns into something much more bigger. Mr. House does own the New Vegas Strip, but the NCR, Caesar's Legion, and a robot named Yes Man, who reminds me of Olaf from Frozen because of how he's always happy, wants to take control of the city. So it's up to you to decide which person you want to side up with for the final battle at Hoover Dam. The DLC content is worth playing as well. There is some pretty fun storylines to take part of and it's really enjoyable. Now you probably already know how much I love this game, but it's not perfect by any means. It's cool to explore around New Vegas in what feels like an empty atmosphere. Well, perhaps it's a little bit too empty for me. I don't know, it just feels like half the time I'm not seeing anything at all except for sand and more sand. And when this game first came out, man it was glitchy as hell, there were so many bugs in this game to a point where it was laughable at best. Thankfully most of it is now patched, but you can still see some weird stuff happening every now and then. And also, I don't know if it's just me or my copy, but it does freeze the game entirely. It only happens once in a while, but it's really annoying that I have to turn off my console to reset the game, all because this game sometimes can just freeze like that out of the blue. But other than that, that's really the only negative parts about this game, and it doesn't really affect it that much because of how pleasurable it is to play this game. Obsidian obviously knew what they were doing and knocked it out of the park with a wonderful and creative RPG experience. For a spin-off game, they did a pretty good job with it, and I'm glad they got the chance to show off their side of what Fallout is all about. A miserable, depressing, post-apocalyptic world filled with civil war, crazy people, and troublesome groups, and if you make one mistake, you could end up just being another victim of the Mojave Deserts to sweep you into ashes. While the graphics is outdated, there's some fun things to do here, and the amount of stuff to accomplish as well is really rewarding. The quests to partake are fun, the characters to meet are interesting, and the journey of being a simple courier to a worldwide recognisable hero or villain is cool. And yeah, while you may come into contact with some weird bugs or freeze frames, but what really makes me excited is coming back to this game to start it up all over again and listen to the theme song at the main menu. Now, what was the aftermath in case you were wondering? 
Well, Bethesda did actually notice that New Vegas was a more better fan-based game than what they created, so they stopped giving Obsidian the rights to make future spin-off titles, and even ignoring it during interviews, which I don't know why that's the case. But not all hope was lost for them, as they made a brand new RPG game in 2019 called The Outer Worlds. It's a really fun game. While it's a bit too short for my liking, but there's a lot of cool things to do here. So this was Obsidian's way of saying, okay, if you won't let us create another Fallout game, we'll make our own RPG game with character progression and making sure each choice is mattered. And as expected, they succeeded. And as for Bethesda, they went on to make Fallout 76. And we all know how that turned out. But yeah. Fallout New Vegas is a must buy. It's really cheap to get nowadays, and trust me, your money will be worth spending. You know, it's kind of weird to be honest. I consider myself as a fan of wrestling, but it's been a long time since I've actually reviewed a wrestling game. So, I guess, tune in next time as we check out a wrestling game. So now you're done with New Vegas, perhaps you can help a settlement that needs assisting. Some folks are having trouble with building some equipment right now, and the more help we can get, the better. Oh, for crying out loud, will you just cut it already? There is absolutely no way I'm going to help you with your annoying side quest. Well, not even for a Scooby snack? Why do I always fall for this every time?